Hey, welcome to the first episode of Ask Dave. Dave, what did you say when you saw the graphic I was preparing for Ask Dave? I don't actually recall. It was, no, don't ask Dave. <laughs> no, you're right. I don't want to be asked. Okay, well, so you're doing this under duress. <laughs> yes. Okay, but here are some questions that came in through Facebook and other places, other social media. Rick Hassler wants to know, uh, what do you like more, your car collection or your shirt collection? I sort of really, I like the shirts, honestly. They are a lot less maintenance. When you don't want to use them, you just hang them up. They don't require repeated uh, uh, attention and they don't drip all over the floor. But most of them don't drip all over the floor. There may be some dripping. What would be dripping from a dry shirt? Yeah, well, color mainly. Uh, okay. Dave Tracy wants to know, whatever happened to the Rocher Schneider? that was out front years ago. Uh, the Rocher Schneider, that was a 19, was that the 14 or 17? I think it was a 17. It went back to Europe. I think it went back to France, actually. Uh, magnificent car, that thing was just awesome. But uh, yep. one of my favorites, uh, uh, I traded, believe it or not, a, a, a Kit Cobra for that, and I never regretted the trade. Donna Riemann would like to know, uh, I'm restoring a 61 English Ford Zephyr. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> In BC, any ideas on where to get parts? Oh, well, you've really got yourself a, a, a bit of an issue there. Uh, quite honestly, whenever we're doing English cars now, the, the, the supply of British car parts sort of dried up in North America, simply because uh, a lot of the guys who were selling them retired or passed away and the, the stuff just got thrown. So what we found now is generally when we're doing an English car like a Hillman or a Zephyr or anything like that, we have got to source them in England. Uh, there's still a pretty good cottage industry there of people who are handling parts like that. So, uh, you know, you're going to have to rely on uh, uh, Google and uh, English dealers. You can also check in Hemmings Motor News, which is uh, sort of the Bible of the old car hobby. It's not as fruitful for this kind of thing as it used to be, but sometimes you get lucky. David Yard wants to know, based on your knowledge of the muscle car era and current muscle car resale values, would you consider a Hellcat Challenger to be more collectible in the future over a 392 Challenger or vice versa? Uh, 392 as in like an original? Well, no, Let's assume yes. Um, you know, a Hellcat is going to have some collectability, but uh, just a little cautionary tale here. I had a very good friend who purchased every Prowler. Like every year she would buy a, the Prowler of that year and sometimes she bought multiple colors uh, thinking that she was going to get rich. And you know what? If she lives another 40 years, she might make her money back. <laughs> it's a difficult thing to, to uh, jump on to a modern muscle car that, uh, that they're touting because you have no control of the production numbers and, and uh, it could stay up or it could tank. But for usability, hell, I go with the Hellcat. They're a lot of fun. Okay. John Morley wants to know, what is your number one most disliked car you, that you either owned or in general? Oh, my d most disliked car, that's an easy one. I, uh, I bought a 79 VW Sirocco. It was the worst car I've ever had. And that's saying something because, you know, I've, I've had the, you know, a, a triple header here. I had a Mercedes that was a piece of junk. It was a 69, pretty uh, big, fancy, you know, car that couldn't get down the road without breaking down. I had a BMW that was the most uncomfortable car that launched one of its struts right through its hood one day. And, and it wasn't a very old car. And I had the Sirocco. But really, when I think about it, you know, raining hard and watching it drive back in its way down the driveway uh, by itself and uh, never managing to get anywhere uh, on time because of it, it took the cake.